Hello everybody, my name is Al Slavin and welcome to my channel. I'm an oil painter and I'm going to be going over some of the very basics of oil painting and what you need to know if you're going to try to capture or uh, create a realistic landscape painting or it, it can be applied to anything really but I'm, I do mostly landscapes and to, to try to achieve the depth and the realism in a, in a landscape like this you have to understand values and that's the kind of the biggest hurdle that I see so many people have. Um, values is probably the most important thing to creating that atmospheric perspective and uh, fooling the eye into believing there's depth in a two-dimensional surface so um, it's like magic in a way and uh, it's a lot of fun but it takes a lot of work and you've got to understand what you're doing in uh, so I'd like to kind of go over a, a simple practice to show you what uh, is possible uh, in quickly uh, understanding the colors that you're using before you actually get into the painting. Uh, when, you, when you're doing a painting, you're designing a painting, you're composing it, not just with the elements inside it, but with the, uh, the color palette that you're using. And you want to make sure that the palette that, you, that you're using, that you understand what it can do for you. So there's a quick little method to it, and we're going to get into that right now. And uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, just do a quick value study. And then those value studies become uh, kind of the building blocks of your painting. Okay? So uh, let's go. Let's get into it. Okay, very simply, what we're going to do, we're going to get some uh, paint out here, which we already have. So we're, we're gonna, we've got a blue. We've got a blue and umber mix which is going to be my dark so the dark that I use in this painting uh, cadmium red we've got yellow ochre we've got cadmium yellow light and then we've got some just titanium white with a little bit of yellow into it to give it a kind of a creamy look so it's not just pure white uh, and we're going to do value studies in all these so like for instance we'll start with uh, let's start with this red you put a little red out there. You add some white to it. Now what you're doing here, this is a tinting process. <clears throat> when, you, uh, when you use white, you're tinting down the color. And uh, I know this seems, seems very basic, but there's, there's so much to learn from doing this. Um, as you add more white to the mix here, you're creating a value study. You've got your pure red, you've got kind of an intermediate red, and you, just, you work it down until you've got, you're into, almost into the pure whites. And it's, it's not really white, but it's, it's down into that very uh, light range right there. So let's say you have this, and uh, it's it's divided into pure tube color, and then you've got some you know, a little bit more white, a little bit more white, a little bit more, a little bit more, and if you measure this off, and you compare the rest of these colors to it, then you can get an understanding of how your values work together. Okay, so that's the red. We take a little bit of yellow, yellow, yellow ochre. When I'm doing a painting of some kind like this, especially landscapes, I'll have more than one yellow in there. I'll have a, a darker yellow and a brighter yellow. And um, I'll use this darker yellow for the different, like maybe for the trees. And then this greener or this brighter yellow for the grass. So th there's a difference automatically. But you can actually combine these yellows together and create your own... Uh, you know, it just a, a whole like hybrid yellow too, and it all works together well. So, in this part, we're going to add a little bit of white. I'm going to work it down. And we're going to work it down. Now, this this particular yellow ochre, it does not have the range that maybe this one does because it's a it, there's more depth to it. 
um, in that color tone but as we move this this down you get an understanding uh, a little more of this up into here because there's a little bit more range there than I showed but there as you're coming down you're getting into that pure again this might be closer to here in comparison and this closer to here and that one into there see it start to get a little bit so you can kind of compare the the different values together there so <clears throat> these values work together these work together these work together and so on so as you're creating this value study you get an understanding of these lighter tones work better back there together wherever that happens to be it depends on where you start with the values in your painting these might be clouds you know that level way back there pushes it back as you get richer and a more saturated color as you come forward okay so let's go to this brighter yellow get a comparison here start working this down now use a piece of glass with a uh, with gray it's like a neutral four or five back there to keep uh, the colors popping up I can see the colors better instead of having it on a white background I used to, used to use white and you can, you can do that if you want to I prefer now I prefer to go into the, uh, the, the gray tones it just looks better it's easier to see you can identify the values better quicker so now you've got a range of yellows okay and even though I got a little bit of red in there maybe it's still you still get the idea of that range of values now we've had the yellow yellow over and the cad red and we've got this burnt umber and ultramarine blue mix together this is about half and half maybe a little bit more to the to the umber but it this creates a, the darks and the values of these darks are the same it's the same dark way back here as it is here as it is here as it is here the values are just different okay so let's see I'll jump ahead of the gun here let's take a little bit of this this mother color as I call it okay put it out there and we're gonna add a little bit of white to it stretch it out add a little bit more white it's actually I've got this as a, like I said as a creamy yellow so the yellowish tone is mixing with this blue and umber uh, black type tone and it's creating a greenish hue to it so well that's okay though because I'm using I'm trying to use and preserve the extremes of the color by not having that white pure white the other reason is pure white is uh, chalky it gives you a chalky appearance in your painting you know the and we're gonna get to this but but the other reason that um, I see beginning painters kind of stumble or, or not quite get what they want to be is because the uh, they're using white as light. Now the big fallacy is that light is titanium white. It's not. Titanium white has one value. You're looking at it. And there is no range of value there so what you want to do when you're doing a painting is you want to create uh, an atmosphere a warmth or whatever you're trying to to convey with either like an orange as your white or a yellow as your white 
or red or purple, whatever it happens to be, that's going to be your light, not white. White will change the value of all the other colors, but you can't change the value of white. Okay, so now you're getting an understanding here of, let me kind of blend this together a little bit, of what we're doing, how we're getting a range of values in these colors. And these are all primary colors. When you start mixing them and getting the secondary colors, you need to do the same thing. Another value study of, of the secondary colors. Because then you start really getting to where you need to be as far as how the painting ties together. All right, so this is ultramarine blue here. We'll take a little bit of that. It's a beautiful color. I really enjoy ultramarine blue. I'm going to go with and some white. Work this thing in here. We'll work it down. Just keep working that down until we get to the those lighter values. I'll blend it up in there. Just show that range. Okay. It's a little bit off, but not too bad. You get the idea. So when you were looking at <coughs> this painting, for instance, these lighter colors in the front, if we reverse this palette, would be back there. All those lighter tones back there are represented by these colors, working their way up. As you come forward, you get a little bit darker, a little bit richer, a little bit darker, a little bit richer as you're moving forward, boom, boom, boom. And then you get into almost your pure colors down into these areas. Now, it takes a lot of control and it takes a lot of uh, patience. Uh, some people are good at it, they just bop, 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 boom, they knock it out, and that's great. But um, it takes me a little bit more uh, concentration to pull it off. <clears throat> but anyway, you see the effects, you get depth, and you get perspective. So do your value studies. If you're using quinacridone reds or you're using any kind of other blues, whatever, do those together. Put your If you have three different blues, put your blues out, make a value study of each blue side by side. You'll start seeing some are bluer, cooler, some are warmer. Um, same thing with your yellows. I did a study where I put all, like five or six yellows down and worked a value study on each one. All of them were different and they all mean different things for your paintings and the effects you're trying to get. So. It's a very important exercise. What I suggest you do, though, is get a canvas board or a masonite board or a panel of some kind, section it off into squares, one-inch squares, and then when you mix this, paint it on those squares and do it just like I'm showing you here. Keep keep the value range. You know, if you're going to do it more systematically, you'll go with the uh, like the pure color out of the tube as number one. Add one part white to it, that's number two. Add two parts white, it's a third square. Four parts all the way down to 10. And just use 10 as your as your guide. And um, it'll open your eyes, okay? It'll show you some stuff, so. Now, I talked about white being a value changer. And I'm gonna show you. If you're going to change the value of white, what do you do? Let's see if I can get some white with any, okay. You've got white right there. If I'm going to make a range of color, I can't do it. Would I add more white? It doesn't change. It's still the same value all the way down. There's no way 
that you can represent. Now there's a little color in there all of a sudden, but uh, there's no way that you can represent actual light, colorful light, by using white. If you use white as your color throughout all this and your sunlight throughout all this, your, your painting is going to be one big chalky mess. So understand that once you use, like say this yellow, back here, you don't use that yellow up here anymore. You use a stronger yellow as you come forward. Now there are some exceptions and you can learn those as you go, but learn the basics, learn the fundamentals, then break the rules, okay? I hope you enjoyed this. It's a quick little lesson. Uh, if you did, subscribe to my, my channel and give me a like and give me some feedback. If you uh, didn't like it, tell me why. If you did like it, tell me why. Um, I'm in the process of building and I'm, I'm interested in uh, knowing what people are looking for, okay? Well, thank you for uh, joining me and uh, have a great day.